my beauty. It is such a lovely day and I am so glad that you are here. I have a very special pattern to tell you about today and yes, I will be showing you a tutorial so be sure to stay tuned for that. When I first started Expression Fiber Arts, Tim and I were actually both living in North Pole, Alaska. I was actually living in the basement of a church at one point. Alaskan winters can be quite challenging. It gets very dark, you get very little sunlight, and it can get really cold. It gets 20, 30, 40 below zero. And especially being isolated in the basement of that church, it was quite something. I actually got a little loopy that winter and went into a little bit of a dark place. But once the snow starts to melt and the lakes start to break up and the days start to get longer, you just get so excited for summer. And I love Alaskan summers because the days get so long, you hardly get any darkness at night and the temperatures are just right. So this shawl was inspired by the joy that comes when the snow first starts to melt, the grass starts to show, the days are getting longer and the sun is high up in the sky. It's a time of hope, renewal and excitement for the spring and the summer ahead. And this shawl, which is called Melting Transitions, is designed to mimic that feeling of anticipation and joy. The colors shift and melt from one into the next, creating that beautiful, melty, fading look. This is a fairly simple design for the adventurous beginner that features these repeating seed stitch wedges. We used our alpaca silk DK yarn for this, which is a puddling, draping, shimmering yarn, so it is perfect for patterns like this. In order to download the PDF for this pattern, head on over to expressionfiberarts.com and you can grab it there. We'll also put the direct link in the description for you. I'm gonna do a brief demo today on how to get started with this shawl. And if you can work these rows, the rest of the rows will be a breeze. I'm just gonna start by casting on 13 stitches. For row one, you're just gonna knit every stitch. For row one, you're just gonna knit every stitch across the row. Now for row two, you're just gonna do the same thing as row one, knit every stitch. Okay, now we can go ahead and start on row three. For row three, you're gonna start with a knit one, and then you're gonna work purl one, knit one across until you have four stitches left. Knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, and I've got two more, and your row will be a lot longer than mine. I'm just doing a small swatch today. When you have four stitches left, you're gonna yarn over, knit two together, and then you're going to knit two. Now we're on to row four. For row four, you're gonna start with knit five. One, two, three, four, and five. Then you're gonna work purl one, knit one, until you have four stitches remaining. Purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one. When you get to the end and you only have four stitches left, you're going to purl one and then knit three. Row five is another simple row, so let's go ahead and work that one. For row five, we're gonna start with a knit three, two, and three. Now we're gonna work purl one, knit one until four stitches remain. Purl, knit, and this is forming our seed stitch. Knit, purl, knit. When you have four stitches left, you're going to yarn over, knit two together, knit one, 
and then knit one front and back. So knit it, but leave the stitch on your needle, wrap around, insert your needle into the back of the stitch as well, and knit through that, and then you can drop it off your left needle. And there you go. For row six, we're gonna learn how to work a wrap and turn. This is very exciting. For row six, you're gonna start with a knit six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then you're gonna work purl one, knit one, until four stitches remain. Purl, knit, purl, knit. When you're down to those four stitches, you're going to purl one and then wrap and turn. And to work that wrap and turn, what I like to do is move the yarn to the back, move the stitch from the left needle to the right needle, move the yarn to the front, and then move that stitch back. And there you go for that row. And now we're moving on to row number seven. Row six is a short row, meaning we're not gonna work those remaining stitches. We're actually gonna go ahead and turn to work row seven. This is how we get that neat little wedge shape in our shawl. What we're gonna do now is work purl one, knit one, until we have three stitches left. And you can tell when you're working seed stitch what stitch you're supposed to be working. If you come to a little bump, you knit it. If you come to a little V, you purl it. So it's very easy to see visually what you should be working. All right, let's go ahead and get to the end. And when you have three stitches left, you're going to yarn over and knit three. Now we're gonna work another wrap and turn in row eight. For row eight, you're gonna start with a knit five. One, two, three, four, five. Then you're going to work purl one, knit one until eight stitches remain. Purl one, knit one, and you would repeat that across. I'm already down to eight stitches. So when you get to that point, you're going to purl one, then you're going to work another wrap and turn. So your yarn is in the back, move the stitch, yarn to the front, move that stitch back to your left needle. And I'm gonna finish up today's demo by showing you how to work row nine. Since row eight was another short row, you stop here and you go ahead and turn to get started on row nine. So to work row nine, you're going to purl one, knit one until four stitches remain. Purl one, knit, purl, knit. And when you have four stitches left, you're going to purl one, yarn over, knit two, and then knit one front and back, just like we did before in a previous row. And there you go. You can see how the little wedges are starting to form. Now, there are more rows in the repeat, but if you can work these first nine rows, you can definitely work the rest of the pattern. This is a beautiful design to create your own color palette. I recommend find something that inspires you. Maybe it's a sunset or the beautiful silvery shimmers on a midnight lake or a favorite painting, whatever it may be, pull colors from that thing that inspires you and create your own gorgeous color melt. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that that was helpful. I hope you have a marvelous day and I am gonna see you next time. Bye for now. I'm so glad that you are here. Yeah. Yeah. Alaskan winters can be quite challenging. You get very little sunlight, it gets really dark in winter, and... It's cold. It's cold, okay. <laughs> and especially being isolated in the basement of that church, I forgot. Okay. What in the world does that mean? Goosh, goosh. Gotta go fix this, woo. Are you recording this? Yeah. <laughs> Don't. That's all they recording. Delete that. It's all they recording. A little loopy that winter. Got a little loopy that winter. Murky caverns there. So happy. You go out and have a marvelous day, and, and I am going to see you next time. I keep messing up. Okay.
really, really dead. Bye for now.